So hello everyone and thank you very much for joining our webinar today. Renting versus buying in Canada, what newcomers need to know. I'm Karim Alassal, the Policy Director at Canada Visa. Last week, the Canadian government announced that Canada continues to enjoy very strong population growth thanks to the many newcomers we are welcoming from all parts of the globe. Of course, one of your top priorities when you move to Canada is finding a home. It's very normal for newcomers to start off by renting in Canada. Eventually, however, Canadian government research shows that the vast majority of newcomers will go on to own a home of their own. You're going to get the best of both worlds during this webinar. We have Canada's leading bank for newcomers, TD, here to walk you through how to rent a home as well as how to buy one here in Canada. They will present in the first half of this webinar and then they're going to answer your questions in the second half. We have received your questions via email prior to the webinar, and we'll answer as many of them as we can in the second half of this event. You're also welcome to type your questions in the chat box on your screens, so please feel free to do so now or throughout the course of the webinar. Please note that we're able to answer general questions about renting and buying during this webinar, for more specific questions so that we can give you uh, the best advice possible and the most accurate information, simply email td.newcomers at td.com after the webinar so that you can receive tailored information. And we'll also include this email address in the chat box shortly so that you're able to make note of it. I'm happy to note that this webinar is being recorded by tomorrow, we are going to send you a recording of the webinar, as well as the PowerPoint slides that TD is about to present to you. TD has been kind enough to share with us two expert speakers for this event. Now, let me go ahead and introduce them. Kate Cochran is a senior manager for TD's complex credit policy team in real estate secured lending. She has been with TD for over 18 years and has held a variety of different roles from branch banking underwriting and credit policy. In her prior role as branch manager, she helped newcomers firsthand with their banking needs. In her current role, she helps to shape and evolve TD's newcomer, newcomer mortgage solutions. On a personal note, Kate enjoys traveling, cooking, and spending time with her family and dogs. Welcome, Kate. Hi, everyone. Darwin Chong is a mobile mortgage specialist with TD. Darwin, Darwin has been with TD for over 18 years, progressing to different retail banking roles in the Toronto area. In his current role, he helps home buyers with their home financing needs with a specialized focus on new to Canada. In his spare time, Darwin enjoys video games, cooking, learning new skills, and all things tech. So with all that being said, Darwin, the floor is now yours. Thank you so much, Kareem. Thanks for the introduction and good morning, everyone. Uh, great. So I see the slide is up. Uh, great. So it's it's everywhere in the news today. We see it all around us in our communities, in our workplaces, in our social circles with our friends when we travel pretty much anywhere in the country. And that's that Canada is growing. Canada is a rapidly growing country thanks to the many families from abroad choosing to make Canada their new home today. One of the first questions that everyone usually asks is where are they going to live? Thank you for joining today's TD information session where we're going to be discussing the differences between renting and buying your first home. My name is Darwin Truong. I'm a mortgage specialist with TD Canada Trust going on just over 10 years with the bank. Uh, and personally, I'm a second generation Canadian to my first generation Vietnamese Canadian parents who made their move to Canada in, in the mid 1980s. Like them, most of my family in Canada were at some point newcomers too. Yes, I know this was a while back and things are very different today, but similar to the families that are new to Canada today, my family all had to ask the hard questions too. Those being, how much can we afford? How much cash do we have on hand? What are we going to do for work? How do we know we want to live here? And will this be a good place for our kids to grow up? Today's session is all about providing you with information on the pros and cons of renting versus buying your first home as a newcomer to Canada. 
to our viewers, thanks for thanks everyone. Um, thanks to everyone for tuning in and watching. If there are any questions, I just wanted to point out that we're going to leave that towards the end of the presentation. This will just allow us to go through the content a little bit more smoothly. So let's get into it. Newcomers to Canada often face the, the dilemma of whether to buy or rent their first home. To decide, you'll need to consider your priorities and goals, and this webinar will look to broadly compare both scenarios with you. So first, we're going to be looking at some of the benefits of, benefits of renting a home. Uh, so one of the major benefits of renting a home would be the flexibility to move. Right. So with renting, oftentimes you're usually renting for it might be a year at a time. And so renting gives you the flexibility of whether it's renting in different areas around your city or maybe you're planning to, to buy and move to a community outside of your, your where you're currently living. It gives you the opportunity to rent there for a bit, see how you like the commute to work and if you like the community <clears throat> before potentially committing to buy, buy and live there long term. It also gives you protection from any value decreases in property. So I know that there's this long-standing belief that buying property generally, like you'll generally only see prices increase with purchasing property, but specifically if you're buying something with the intention to sell, especially within the near future, then you, you would want to consider, you know, that uh, purchasing has the potential for downside in, uh, in, in price valuation. And so that renting may, may protect you from value decreases. For example, you don't want to be forced to sell in a down market if you purchase knowing that you might have to sell in three years or you, or if you knew that you were going to relocate for work or something in a couple of years, you might not want to be forced into potentially managing an unintended rental property because you, you know, it was it wasn't a good time for you to sell and you've now committed to purchase. <clears throat> Some other things, uh, benefits of renting is that there's typically lower upfront and ongoing costs and there isn't typically need for a large substantial down payment. So generally with when you're renting a property, you'll typically have to give the landlord a deposit with your lease. The deposit will typically only be maybe two months, two months rent, generally in the form of first and last month's rent deposit, <clears throat> or sometimes it can be more. Maybe you're paying six month rent deposit with your lease, and that might look something like you know you're paying first month's rent and last five months rent <clears throat> but beyond that typically there isn't much more uh, upfront closing costs or, or down payment you need to consider uh, before looking at renting there are other things you'll need to take into consideration as well so with renting i like to let people know that it might be a good idea to look at how much the cost of rent is within your budget but also factor in potential for rent increase a uh, good a good kind of rule of thumb or something that i would like to consider is maybe expect for example and it could be more it could be less depending on your tolerance but plan for say five percent annual rent increase <clears throat> on top of budgeting for uh, a good healthy comfortable savings on top of your rent Right, so savings would be important to have for your own personal goals, travel, retirement, any other miscellaneous <clears throat> expenses. Uh, on top of rent, you should be able, you should expect that you'll have to pay for some utilities, perhaps internet costs or renters insurance. You should also uh, look to understand your rights and responsibilities as a tenant. And you'll also want to understand the terms and conditions of your lease. So this might include things like whether or not you can smoke, whether or not uh, how the utilities in, in your um, property are going to be split between you and the landlord. Uh, are pets allowed in your building? Are you allowed to have uh, a large number of family members over and host parties and social events in your building? Uh, these are all things to sort out before you're looking at um, <clears throat> when or things to consider when you're looking at renting a place. Right, so going into the benefits of buying a home. <clears throat> it seems like in Canada, uh, while it's unwritten, it's almost culturally a normalized end goal to buy and own a home. So what are some of the main benefits of buying a home today? Owning a home offers us a, the potential to own a lifelong asset that helps us build equity and credit. There is the potential for your home value to increase in value. Um, in Canada, we've seen up until recently, there's been a huge price appreciation across most of the country in homes. Um, <clears throat> And, uh, it, and homes have arguably, arguably been one of the best performing asset classes over the last many years. 
Um, owning a home offers you the flexibility to renovate and upgrade the property as you like, right? Whereas, you know, upgrading or changing the property that you're renting, you may need permission from your landlord. They might not allow you to do certain things. Uh, you don't have to worry about lease terms, about, you know, potentially being kicked out of your home, um, about rent increases and stuff like that. And down the line, it can also be a great income generating asset with leveraged returns on your capital. This means that as home values change, your investment returns or losses are amplified. Right, so are, so are you ready to buy a home? Buying a home is a big decision and a huge financial commitment. On top of being able to make payments now, you should, ask, you should ask if your finances are stable enough to maintain payments in the future. Do you have a backup savings in place in case you, you know, uh, experience job loss? Do you have insurance in place in, in case you experience hardship, like get in a major accident? Or if you pass away, do you have insurance in place to pay off the home for your family and dependents? Are you ready and willing to take on the responsibilities and costs of maintenance? And is there anything else that you'd like to do with your money? Maybe you have money to purchase today or to commit to a down payment, but you might want to, uh, for example, help your parents with their retirement or something. And then maybe down the line, you'll inherit funds from them that you can use to purchase your home later down the line, right? So there's some opportunity cost and trade off with, uh, with purchasing. So I know for me and myself, when uh, my partner and I were buying our first home, we had to consider a number of things as well. So in our case, for example, we looked at proximity to our parents, how long the commute to work would be. Is it a good area for potential investment or rental down the line if we decided to do that with the home later? Uh, how does it fit into our budget along with our savings and travel and other commitments? Uh, what type of property it is? And uh, so I think with a lot of these questions in mind, it's great to come up with a list of needs and wants and prioritize for them. For me, one of the things I knew that I wanted in my space was a spacious, a space, a spacious kitchen and a home office for, you know, more the work, work from home environment that, uh, that a lot of us are in today. For someone else, they might want a finished basement for entertaining, or they might want a garage for, you know, wood shop and storage. Uh, it could be a number of things. So everybody has to look at that on their own. Uh, so on top, so once you've decided that you do want to purchase, there's a lot, a lot of questions that you should be, you should take note of and consider asking yourself. A lot of these things will overlap with questions you want to ask when you're renting too. Of course, when buying, you're going to be committed to them for a longer term. So some of these things would be, where do you want to live? How close is the property to public transportation? What's the neighborhood like? Um, you know, what's the entertainment in the area like? Um, how are the, how are the schools? Uh, what type of property you'd be looking at? Uh, are you are you expecting to purchase a single family home or um, a, a home that you may rent part of the home with and, and live in another portion? What's the condition of the home and will there do you need to put a lot of work in the home for renovations? Or is there you know potential risk that there'll be large upkeep costs that uh, that may come into effect soon down the line? And what your mortgage payments uh, will look like. So Touching on this a little bit, again, I mentioned, I think it is a great practice to have a checklist with needs and wants. And then as you kind of decide what is your needs list, a higher priority than once, you'll want to kind of, as you're looking at different areas, take a look at your budget and see which area and basically gauge how, how to tick off as many of your needs and wants as possible within your budget. Right. So some people may value location more than property itself. Some uh, others may may value uh, having a big home and be willing to commute longer to work. Um, all things to consider. Right. So in looking at how much you can afford, we know that owning a home can cost quite a lot. Um, but the monthly costs can include so your mortgage payments, uh, property tax payments, condo fee payments, home insurance, utilities, uh, any emergency and maintenance costs. I uh, just wanted to note out of, the, out of most of these costs indicated here, uh, a lot of them will typically increase over years as well, whereas the mortgage is generally a flat payment, especially if you're going with a fixed, um, a fixed non-varying payment. But most of the other ones will increase um, over time, so you'll want to kind of budget for that as well. 
And then some of the unexpected maintenance costs can include things like repairing, you know, your roof, uh, your, your heating or air conditioning, HVAC, uh, any landscaping and lawn care costs, repairing, you know, fence repairs, water damage, environmental damage, just general wear and tear. Uh, there's pest control, alarm, uh, alarm systems and security. Uh, anything else I've forgotten, but there's quite a lot of um, a lot that goes into to home maintenance. So now that you've decided to purchase and that you want to purchase and you know a bit more about what you're going to be purchasing, you'll want to take a look at your budget. All right. So once once you're at to the stage that you are looking at your budget, another good practice to have is uh, is think of a strategy around. Um, you know how much you want to spend and how much you want how you want your home cost to factor into your overall quality of life and overall spending right so there's this general idea in personal finance of living below your means it's one of the first rules of sound money management in that you want to spend less than you earn this means creating a margin between what you earn and what you spend so that you have money for savings and incidentals and other things you want to do with your money too right because you don't necessarily want to just purchase and be house broke there's also a general belief in personal finance that as much as it's important to to earn a good income, it's also just as important to be able to set aside a good savings. Right. And so for those of you that um, I know it's really popular these days, people like to uh, count and track calories uh, on different apps. And uh, those of you that are very organized and a bit more tech savvy, uh, I'd recommend the TD My Spend app on the, the app store. It's a free app that you can use that allows you to track your transactions um, on a, like, as they run through your account. And you can separate those between needs and wants and other transaction types so that as you go into your budget and planning, you can kind of look at what you're spending each month on a certain category and tweak that as you, f as you feel you need to, but also have a better idea of your, your current habits as you plan to take on additional expenses for your new, new housing arrangement. Right, and lastly, so um, I mentioned that I'm a mortgage specialist with the bank. Uh, so in this slide, we're just mentioning briefly, what is a mortgage? So a mortgage is a loan that helps you buy your first home or lets you help, helps you finance a home. Um, the property on a mortgage is, is typically um, pledged as security for the loan. So what this means is that um, it's a type of loan where if, peop if you don't make payments for an extended period of time, the lender or bank does have the legal right to foreclose on the property, uh, essentially selling the property to recoup losses on the loan. So it is a collateralized secure loan that um, people intend to pay over the course of typically uh, 25 to 30 years. The length of time that you pay off your mortgage is called the amortization period. And so in Canada, the max amortization period you can you can choose currently is 30 years, although the typical more more average amortization usually starts at 25 years. Um, TE does have different different tools that, that you can use to kind of estimate how much you can afford. For this part, I definitely recommend um, whether it's it's with a mortgage professional like myself or you know other trusted lender at a you know whichever bank that you're working with i definitely think that you should um reach out to someone for a second opinion as much as mortgage calculators are useful you would it's it certainly wouldn't hurt to get a second opinion or perhaps a more educated guess or estimate of how much you think you can afford uh and then as you as you move closer to actually purchasing, then you definitely want to uh, apply for what's called a pre-approval with the bank. So this would be a more formal application with some documentation that you provide to the lender and they can kind of gauge with you a better estimate of how much you can purchase before you're um, moving out to, uh, to, to purchase your next home. I uh, just wanted to share a couple links with everyone as well. So the uh, this is a the first link I'm going to share is just a mortgage payment calculator on the public TD site that you can use to estimate how much you um, how much payments payments uh, you can expect for a certain mortgage and rate would be, and also uh, how much you can potentially afford. And then the second link I'm going to share is just our general um, TD Mobile Mortgage Specialist lookup. Here you'll be able to look up a specialist in your area or with certain language preferences as you like. Uh, and with that, I think I'm going to pass pass it over to Kate. Uh, thanks so much for tuning in. Okay, thanks, Darwin. Uh, now that we've spoken briefly about what a mortgage is, let's talk a little bit about a down payment. 
A down payment is a percentage of your home's purchase price that you pay up front. Some banks have mortgage payments, mortgage programs tailored to newcomers and will have specific minimum down payment requirements. The TD Down Payment Calculator is a great and helpful tool to use to figure out how much you'll need to save each month for a down payment. You can find the TD Down Payment Calculator online on our website as well. As we are approaching the end of the presentation, I would like to speak about one last thing, TD's Mortgage Program for Newcomers. TD can help you finance your first home in Canada with specific, specially designed mortgage programs for newcomers. Did you know that you may be eligible for a TD mortgage, even if you do not have any Canadian credit history, provided you meet TD's eligibility and credit criteria? For more information about our program, book an appointment with a TD mortgage specialist to learn about our mortgage options after you have arrived in Canada. Thank you everyone for attending today's session and discussing renting versus buying. I hope that you came away with some great advice to help you with these very important sessions. I'm now going to pass it over to Kareem so that we're able to answer some of your questions now during the live Q&A section. Thank you so much, Kate, and thank you, Darwin. So we're going to go ahead and begin answering your questions. Uh, again, we are going to be emailing you tomorrow with the link to the recording of this webinar, as well as a PowerPoint slides that Darwin and Kate just spoke to. You're also welcome to uh, email TD after the webinar at td.newcomer at td.com with any personal questions you have. And if you take a look at the chat box, you can see some of the resources that TD has kindly shared with us, including Darwin's contact details, uh, their mortgage uh, payment calculator, and other helpful links. Okay, so uh, this is a great question that's come in from Mustafa. The question is, generally speaking in Canada, how much of one's income should they budget towards either their rent or their mortgage payments? Okay, um, I can take that away. Uh, Typically, when you get a mortgage here in Canada, um, Canadians spend anywhere between 35 to 50% of their income on housing and utilities. Great. Thank you for that, Kate. Maria asks, sorry, Mary asks, what's required for a mortgage pre-approval and how long does the process take? For mortgage pre-approval, um, you would need to be able to provide the bank with confirmation of employment, as well as confirmation of your income and confirmation of down payment. Um, we would, and the bank would also take a look at um, either your credit credit history here in Canada or your credit history overseas. The process for uh, pre-approval can take anywhere from seven to 10 business days. Excellent. Um, we've received a couple of questions on this topic, uh, most recently from Maya. What uh, percentage of the property value does one need to, um, or what, What's the down payment percentage required in Canada for property? You can put as little as 5% of a down payment here in Canada, anywhere between 5% to 20%. Uh, you would require default mortgage insurance. If your down payment is 20% or above, you wouldn't need default mortgage insurance. So I just wanna add on this one that um, like, everybody's situation when they're new to Canada it varies a lot and there's a lot of different policies here and a lot of different um, everybody's circumstance is going to be different um, in, in answering this question for example when we say reach out to a mortgage specialist to to answer your questions better so this answer is going to be very different from someone yeah. that is purchasing um, through an insured mortgage with less than 20 percent down or they could be new to Canada on you know a work permit 
or study study permit. They could be new to Canada as new permanent res residents. And, and depending on each each different scenario, um, the answer to that's going to be very different. Um, so it's, that's just just generally because I think people will find a lot of the the answers is going to be reach out to a to a special uh, a specialist, and we have to be a little bit broader with answers. Um, just wanted to point out this this is a good example of that uh, and why it's what's it's good to reach out to someone directly. Yeah, that's a great call out, Darwin, because everybody's situation is unique. Um, so to really understand um, what you would need to put as a down payment from a mortgage, definitely speak to one of our mobile mortgage specialists and they'll be able to provide you with an answer and with tailored advice. I am asked a great question and it's very interesting. If one has cash on hands, do you need to get a mortgage or can you buy a property outright in Canada? No, you you definitely don't have to um, to get a mortgage. You can certainly purchase purchase outright if you like to. Roman asks, what's the difference between an open and closed variable rate? What are the pros and cons of each? Darwin, do you want to take this one away? Sure. Yeah. So, um, so, so I think open and clo there's a lot of, um, I will say bank jargon with, with mortgages. And so I think when people say open and closed mortgages, they could be referring to one of two things. Uh, by definition, open and closed mortgage just refers to, um, the prepayment privileges or prepayment options of how you can pay down the loan. And so what I mean by that is with a traditional mortgage, let's say, for example, you're paying $2,000 a month, you're supposed to pay this mortgage <clears throat> with the bank for, we'll say, five years. If you went and paid off that mortgage in full in year two, then you're now no longer paying that $2,000 per month on the mortgage for years three through five, right? And so this would be um, a good example for an open versus closed mortgage, where that an open mortgage allows you to pay off as much as you want at any point in time with no prepayment penalty, whereas a closed mortgage only allows you to prepay up to a certain amount each calendar year against the mortgage directly off the principal. And so with us, that's 15% of the original borrow amount. Um, but I think in today's climates, when people say open and closed variable, what they're referring to is different variable um, rate products that different banks have because not all of them are the same. And so some banks have variable rate closed mortgages with set payments. And what this means is that as the interest rates move up and down, your regular periodic payment is, is the same as what it was when you first signed your mortgage contract. And just the interest portion will increase or decrease with you know, prime rate. Whereas other variable rate mortgages will see as prime rate moves up and down, the person, the applicant or the borrower's payment is going to change dynamically with that, right? So, so those are two different things to look out for is uh, open, close, open versus closed, referring to the prepayment privilege, and then also a static versus, um, we'll say static versus dynamic payments for, for the regular periodic payments. Very well said. Thank you very much, Darwin. This has been by far our most popular question so far. Can one purchase a home in Canada if they are on a study permit or a work permit? In other words, they do not yet have permanent resident status. So you can. Um, that uh, is a, a really um, great question. So you can. You may qualify for a mortgage under one of our Newcomer to Canada programs. However, effective January 1st of 2023, the Government of Canada did place certain restrictions on the purchase of residential properties by non-Canadians, including those people who have a work permit or a study permit. I would recommend that you would speak with a lawyer or a notary to confirm whether or not you're eligible to buy a residential property in Canada before you start your home search. There are um, certain criteria that you need to meet. So by speaking with a lawyer, they would be able, to, or a notary, they would be able to confirm whether or not you meet those uh, specific criteria. And currently right now, the um, Prohibition Act is in place until January 1st of 2025. Perfect, thank you for that, Kate. Rajdeep asks, what general tips and advice do you have for someone 
who's looking to buy a home as a newcomer, but is obviously looking to avoid fraud as well? <laughs> well, um, I would definitely speak with a uh, qualified representative through um, one of the financial institutions and um, make sure that you are um, in touch with a qualified lawyer or notary who's reputable. Um, but I would start definitely by speaking with a financial representative um, and as well as getting a realtor from one of the more reputable uh, realty companies to be able to help you look for a home. Elham asks, what is TD's definition of a newcomer for an individual to be able to benefit from your newcomer mortgage uh, packages and offers? So um, are we, that question there, are we specifically, I can talk about um, the requirements of a mortgage, but if you're looking to have additional information on our TD Newcomers program, um, and other offers that we might have, I would suggest um, emailing the td.newcomer at td.com and they'll be able to provide you with all the different, different packages that we have for everyday banking. So your checking accounts, your credit cards and other um, programs that we offer for newcomers. When we're thinking about a TD mortgage, um, there are very many different programs that we have and down payment can range anywhere from, as I said before, 5% up to 35%. Everybody's financial needs are different. Um, so I would suggest contacting a mobile mortgage specialist for more information on um, which TD Newcomer program would best suit um, your own personal financial needs and goals. Excellent. Anthony asks, is there a cutoff age for mortgage applicants? Absolutely not. No cutoff age at all. Ezra asks, are there tax rebates available for mortgage payments and for rental payments? Um, I'm not a tax specialist. Um, I would reach out to an accountant uh, or a tax professional to uh, find out that answer. Bala asks, do interest rates vary depending on an applicant's credit rating? No. I'm glad that question was raised. That's actually a very common myth. People yeah. think that, uh, yeah, like they, you know, the interest rate they get has a lot to do with, um, with credit score and, and that's not the case. Francis asks, I've heard that newcomers need two years of work experience before a bank will approve their mortgage application. How true is that? And uh, if it is true, what happens if I have less Canadian experience, but with a lot of work experience from overseas? So again, um, everybody's situation is different. Um, here under TD's newcomer program, uh, we will look at applicants with a minimum of three months employment here in Canada. Um, but I would suggest you reach out for a to a mobile mortgage specialist to be able to do, to confirm um, your own unique employment needs and whether or not we and to find out which program you would qualify for uh, with TD. Perfect. Um, here's another common question. Can I buy a home overseas before moving to Canada? And uh, if so, is it possible to get a mortgage while still overseas? You would need to be here in Canada to be able to uh, purchase a home. Um, you could, um, again, we talked a little bit about the Prohibition Act. So again, depending on your neat situation, we may or may not be able to assist you. I would suggest again, reaching out to a TD Mobile Mortgage Specialist to determine whether or not uh, you would qualify underneath one of our programs. Joette asks, does TD consider foreign income when a newcomer is looking to apply for a mortgage? Depending on which newcomer program you are applying under, we will consider foreign income. Um, we have a couple, we have a few different programs. I would suggest again, 
contacting one of the mobile mortgage specialists to see if um, which program you would qualify for and whether or not we would be able to use foreign income. Can Anne ask a question? I know we've touched on this already, but it is continuing to come up. Does one's mortgage rates differ by their immigration status in Canada? Absolutely not. There's no uh, difference. The mortgage rates that you would get here in Canada would be the same for that I would get, that Darwin would get. It doesn't matter what your immigration status is, what your credit score is. Uh, mortgage rates are consistent for all TD customers. If I could just add on topic of rates is that uh, currently we are, um, and, and I have no idea what, what's to come, but currently we are in a rising rate, current rate environment. So questions about getting the best rates and so on. In the last couple of weeks, last couple of months, the best rate clients have been getting is with whichever bank or lender they approached first. <laughs> That's to say that in the current environment, a rate hold, pre-approval and all that stuff is very is probably more important than negotiating and rate shopping and so on. Uh, with TD, for example, even without an application, without a credit check, you can reach out to a rep. They can do a rate hold for you for up to 30 days uh, or sometimes up to 45, depending on what you're purchasing. Um, and that's that's no commitment from you. Right. But then after that, within the next couple of weeks, if we're still if rates are still increasing um, and you want to take advantage of the offer that you have, you can apply. But if rates improve or we're rate matching someone else, another competitor, or whatever it is, we can always change and improve on that. Um, so in, in, in terms of current best rates, I would say just again, speak to, speak to someone sooner is better than later, um, just to have something in place as a backup. And that's probably a best starting point. And then after that, you can kind of negotiate for better or to improve from there. Mary asks, do banks charge for access to a mortgage specialist? Or are they a free resource? They're a free resource. We do not charge. <laughs> How does TD, this is a question from Florence, how does TD check one's credit history if they're still new to Canada? They don't have a Canadian credit history. Uh, there's a couple of options that we would look at. We may ask for you to provide us with a copy of your foreign credit report, or we could ask for six months uh, statements of um, your bank account or credit card showing that a loan or a mortgage payment has been paid as agreed. Yeah, let's touch on this one again. We have this question is also coming from Pablo. At what stage does one no longer be considered a newcomer when applying for a mortgage? Hmm. Um, that's a really, really great question. Um, it, it really does depend on a variety of different factors. I would suggest, again, and this is unique to every single customer, my recommendation would be to reach out to a mobile mortgage specialist uh, so they could to uh, discuss your situation with them and they would then be able to determine whether or not um, you would still be considered a newcomer to Canada, whether we could look at approving you under one of our conventional lending programs. Um, it, it just varies from customer to customer. You have asked, um, what's the debt ratio for one's income? Uh, what, what is the ceiling for the debt ratio if one wants to get approved for a mortgage? So again, depending on which program you're applying under, um, I can speak standard debt ratio guidelines as max is 44%, which is our total debt service ratio. But depending on which program, if you're coming in under our newcomer program, we may have different thresholds for debt servicing. So my recommendation would be to reach out to a mobile mortgage specialist so that they would be able to determine which program would best suit your financial needs. So I'll ask an easier question. This one comes from Deep. Are there mortgage products available from TD that offer only fixed in interest rates for the entire term of the loan? For the, we offer mortgage interest rates for um, 
five-year term. Mortgages can be amortized over a 25 to 30 year amortization period. So what would happen is your rate would be good for the first five years and that would be locked in. And then at the end of the five years, your mortgage would be up for renewal. And then you would go back in to uh, speak with your mortgage advisor to discuss um, what you, your new interest rate might be for the next five years. So we offer terms either one year, two year, three year, four year, five year term. Um, are the most popular and uh, that most clients look at. And those rates would be locked in for that specific time that you chose uh, to lock your rate in for. So Francis is asking for a look behind the curtain. The question is, what factors influence the interest rates that T offers? As well, the term's going to, so the length of the term is going to, um, impact your uh, interest rate. So sometimes, um, and I'm not so close to the interest rates now, but rate. So for instance, sometimes a five-year term might be a little bit higher than say a two-year term, or depending on the market, you could have a two-year term higher than a five-year term. It just depends. I think some common, you... uh, <clears throat> oh, it's going to add as well. I think some common things that you'll see, not just with TD, but all banks, um, that where you'll see some variance between rates between, you know, different households um, at any given time with the bank is that uh, like your your strength of banking relationship uh, with the bank. So, um, you know, a household that has all their banking with TD, their investments and business accounts and day-to-day -day accounts versus someone that's brand new to bank um, with a very thin relationship. You can imagine the first person might get a preferred rate. Uh, most banks will generally have, um, and it's not a big difference, but you'll see some um, better rates for depending on loan size. So if the loan size is a lot bigger, the business value to the bank is, uh, you know, more substantial than the bank might offer, uh, potentially be able to offer more a better rate discount. Um, and then also the loan type that you're getting. Uh, so a lot of lenders will offer 0.1% lower if the mortgage amortization is 25 years and less. If it's 30 years amortization, then, you know, a lot of the times you'll see rates 0.1 higher. And then you'll also see lower rates if you're purchasing through an insured mortgage as opposed to a conventional mortgage. An insured mortgage being a mortgage w where you're purchasing with less than 20% down. You'll see better yeah. rates there. And the other thing that's going to impact your rate is whether or not it's an open or closed term. So yeah. you're going to have a higher rate if you have an open mortgage. If you have a closed term, you're going to have a lower rate. Mary has another question and it is, is there such a thing as secured mortgages? Like there are secured credit cards? Well, um, the, I'm not really sure how to answer this. So when you purchase a home and you buy and you get a mortgage, we actually hold the home um, as collateral. So technically your mortgage is secured because we have the home as collateral. And then as you pay it down over that 25 to 30 year period, when there's no balance owing, that's when TD no, or any financial instance no longer has an interest in the property and the, and the home is then outright yours. Darwin, you've already touched on this. Um, sure. Edward has a follow-up question on it. Is one able to pay off their mortgage prior to the end of the amortization period? Uh, so yes and no. Um, so the with usually people are generally purchasing, I'd say, you know, well over 90% of buyers are typically getting a, cl a, a closed type mortgage. And so with a closed type mortgage with us, um, and, and again, all the banks are pretty much the same. Actually, this is an area where our product is a little bit more flexible than maybe some of our competitors. But uh, with a closed mortgage with us, for example, um, a borrower is allowed to prepay 15% of the original borrow amount each calendar year. And that amount resets every January 1st every year. They can prepay again 15% off of the original loan amount. That amount doesn't it's not cumulative, so it doesn't add, you know, if you don't prepay in years one and two, you can't pay 45% down in year three. Um, but on top of that, you can also increase your regular scheduled payments up to 100%. Um, and then so the increased portion that you're paying beyond your regular payment goes directly against principal. Uh, that's on top of the 15% lump sums per year. 
So if a buyer was taking advantage of that every year over the span of a five-year mortgage and increasing their payments, they can pretty much pay off most, of, most if not all, the mortgage in the first term. Um, but if someone was to prepay an above and beyond the 15% in the calendar year and it was the closed mortgage, there would be prepayment penalty calculated on the portion they paid above and beyond their annual allowance. But at the end, I think it's important to call out at the end of your, like for instance, if you take a five-year term and your mortgage is up for renewal, at the end of that five-year term, if you wanted to pay off your mortgage, you could do so um, without penalty instead of renewing it. So on this topic, El Sayida asks, can an amortization period be changed after approval and when a mortgage has begun? So amortization period cannot be extended beyond the original contract term without a new application. So we have some good programs in place that allow our, you know, our existing um, borrowers to extend amortization, but they would need to requalify for that and they would need to go, th re go through that refinance process. Um, they can shorten their amortization through any of the prepayments I had mentioned though. Um, I guess it, it adding to that, so if someone was to prepay, say you started with a $2,000 a month mortgage, you've made several lump sum payments over the course of your mortgage, uh, the TD product does actually allow you to reduce your payment to the extent that you're back on course with your original amortization schedule. And so your new minimum payment might actually be lower than the 2000 you started with. Uh, but you cannot extend beyond your original contract without reapplying. Kanan has a related question. It's, can one begin their mortgage on a variable rate and then later shift and change it to a fixed rate? Yeah, absolutely. So if you're in a variable rate term and you're finding that the uh, interest rates are increasing and you're not comfortable with that in, in, in that increasing rate environment, you can uh, look at locking in your rate to a fixed term. <laughs> um, Kanan has another question and it's, uh, can one who already has a mortgage with a bank transfer the mortgage to another bank? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. You would reach out to a more mobile mortgage specialist. They would be able to help you facilitate that uh, transfer or switch. Um, and, uh, we would, and you would be able to move the mortgage over from one financial institution to another. Let's uh, shift gears for a moment. So we've talked a lot about buying a home. We have a question here about renting. If someone is coming to Canada, do they need a referral or references if they're looking to rent? Other words, maybe a landlord just needs a bit of um, comfort with that person. Do they need a referral to be approved? Uh, you know what? I've actually never rented a property, so I'm not 100% sure. Um, I would think that most um, landlords would require a referral or some type of credit check prior to renting um, a property. Um, but Darwin, I don't know if you want to keep me honest, if you know the answer. <laughs> no worries. Yeah. So um, I think in this case, it's going to vary a lot from, from landlord to landlord, right? Different landlords will... Um, and just as people, uh, you know, you hear the concept of um, uh, motivated seller, motivated buyer, just like, you know, there's motivated landlords too. Maybe they want to get a tenant in soon. They can be a little bit less picky. They may not need that. Another landlord may uh, request and ask for that. Uh, generally, what I see with leases is that if someone doesn't have, um, and so a recommendation could be a letter of recommendation from the previous landlord. Um, they may also ask for a guarantor or something on the lease. So someone um, with more established credit in Canada to sign as guarantor to the lease for you. Uh, and if you don't have any of the above, sometimes now, um, I believe they can't ask for it, but it's not uncommon for um, people with less established credit history in Canada to just um, up their deposit a bit. So they would pay a you know more months upfront deposit uh, or just show that they have good assets in the bank um, to uh, with, with bank statements or whatever it is you want to show to kind of give the landlord a bit more comfort. But there isn't a hard requirement for that. Oli asks, does one need to 
purchase insurance if they're looking if they're uh, buying a home in Canada? Home insurance? Yes. Yes, yes it, it, you do need to purchase home insurance. This is a bit of a, a tricky question, but maybe we can share more resources with um, our participants afterwards. How can one learn about average rents across Canada? Um. Personally, if, if I was looking to get that question answered myself, uh, that's a really good question for a realtor, uh, just because they would generally have better accesses to resources for that stuff than you, know, you and I, where they can kind of look at specifically, um, not just average rents within the city, or even, you know, um, smaller communities around the city, but you can, they, you can ask them to compare like different pockets of the city and they can compare, you know, rents between, you know, uh, any parameters you want, whether it's older buildings, newer buildings, whatever it may be. But those, those are questions that would probably take a real estate professional, you know, two seconds to figure out and could be a lot longer for, for us to find, especially through one consistent resource. Yeah, that's a great response. Yeah, that's where I would start as well is with uh, with a realtor. Excellent. So that brings us to the end of today's webinar. Thank you very much to everyone for taking time out of your busy schedules to participate. To participate, sorry. As noted, this webinar was recorded and we're going to email you shortly with a link to the PowerPoint slides, as well as with access to more TD resources to help you settle and integrate in Canada. Again, please feel free to email us at td.newcomers at td.com so that TD can answer any specific questions that you may have. Now, before we wrap up, uh, I'd like to pass things back over to Kate and Darwin to provide us with their final thoughts. So I just wanted to thank everybody for attending today, hoping that uh, you got some value out of the presentation and the questions that Darwin and I uh, were able to answer. If you have any additional questions, please um, reach out to the uh, new, email the newcomer web, uh, email address or reach out to Darwin specifically if he, he's provided his email or you can also find a mobile mortgage specialist and they'll, uh, they'll also be able to help you. So thank you very much, everyone. I don't have too much more to add beyond what uh, Kate had said. Uh, pretty much mere pretty much the same. Uh, so the resources we share, just recapping, um, I gave Mike my, my direct contact for anybody with mortgage questions. Uh, we have the contact for finding uh, just a general mortgage specialist within your area or someone if you had language preferences. We have the newcomer email for generic newcomer uh, questions about any of our uh, current programs, current day-to-day um, -day account promotions or, or other general questions as well. I uh, just want to thank everybody for being attentive and taking part with all the questions. Uh, it was great to see everyone participate and uh, thank everybody for, for their time and attendance today. Thanks everyone. Have a great day.